Today I'll be playing Extreme Civ, the most extreme form of Civilization 6 designed for only pro gamers and the criminally insane. Luckily I fit both the criteria, so it's time to break Civilization 6 Extreme Edition. So what is Civ 6 Extreme? Is it a game mode where Nuclear Gandhi activates and decimates the world back to the Stone Age? No, Extreme Civ is extremely long Civ, as we will be playing on the marathon game speed. Everything will take three times as long, but also be three times as imbalanced, allowing for some of the most broken Civ 6 gameplay the world has ever seen. But with a game lasting three times as long, surely it will take me an incredibly long time to defeat it. But that's where you're wrong, ladies and gentlemen, for I am a god of this game, and if anything, it will actually make the game faster. So grab your warm cups of tea and get ready for the strangest Civ 6 footage the world has ever witnessed. Let the games begin. Say hello to the Chinese Empire, ladies and gentlemen, led by Queen. Chin Huang. Now, China in Civ 6 isn't necessarily that good. It usually ends up around the midpoint of most tier lists for several very important reasons. Its unique unit isn't that good. Its unique improvement isn't that good. Its ability to improve Eurekas and Inspirations is worse than other Civs. And its one redeeming feature, which is that it can use builder charges to speed up the construction of wonders, is completely overshadowed by the fact that on a normal game speed, it hardly makes any difference. Nobody needs to potentially use seven builder charges over seven turns to build a wander, when it might just take seven turns to build that wander on say a faster speed. So China ultimately isn't very good. However, we're playing on marathon speed, ladies and gentlemen, and on marathon speed, this is a good ability, because each builder still gives 15% towards the wander's construction, and on this game speed, that's a lot. Now, we're going to settle our capital city, and already you can see it's going to take us 26 turns just to build a monument. A scout will take 13 turns, a warrior will take 18 turns and a builder is going to take 22 but that's not all research is also going to take forever astrology would take us 60 turns to research and the first of our culture things comes in at 47 turns worth of culture meaning the start of this game is going to be very slow but it's basically going to be all about us building up builders and scouts trying to discover as much of the world as possible and maybe getting ourselves a second city nice and early goody huts at this speed are massively important because each goody hut could potentially save us say 23 and entire turns of growing a population. This is huge. By the way, we're also playing with every single DLC enabled, which, uh, as we know from the developers of Civ 6, means the game is horrifically unbalanced. So in order to rebalance it, make sure to grab yourself a nice refreshing cup of Yorkshire tea, as we're about to destroy this game. Okay, so the opening turns weren't really that eventful, our borders have expanded, but most importantly it's turn 27, and you'll notice we're a little bit ahead of schedule. Namely, we already have a builder out, and we have a warrior over here who's upgraded. We managed to clear out a lovely barbarian camp, gaining some additional gold, and also pick up two little tribal villages, which have given us a fantastic head start. Namely, we got an extra population this turn, bringing our pop up to three, meaning our production is now way higher than it should be, and we got a free builder. This puts us decently ahead of time, although we do have one issue, which is that we can't actually use the builder to build anything, simply because we haven't researched it. It's going to take us 22 turns to actually work out how to build a mine, so we can't really do that, and at the same time, we don't know how to build a camp or a pasture, so these elephants and foxes well, who knows how they work. But in the meantime, we have also got this scout way out over here, and this bad boy has been scouting so much. He's picking up a whole bunch of goody huts, which are giving us lots of amazing boosts, like, for example, masonry, which we recently got. This has shaved over 30 turns off of the research here. This is fantastic. But for the most part, we're just going to be building up our lovely early empire, getting out as much as possible, and then seeing if we can rush towards an early wander or two. Okay, so we finished ourselves Stonehenge, which is very nice. The process was very simple. We basically picked it up, and then over the span of seven turns, we just banged it out. Now we do have a few issues, which is that we can't actually found a religion yet because we need a pantheon. So in order to get ourselves a pantheon, we need to wait for enough faith to be generated from Stonehenge for us to actually then benefit from it. But the main reason I'm showing you this turn is because we've made our way really, really deep into land and we haven't found ourselves an AI, which is very exciting. We're playing on a standard map size with a standard amount of AIs, meaning logically we should be encountering loads of them by now. But as we're not, this means we need to aggressively settle as fast as we can. Also, most importantly, I've established Liang inside of our capital. This is because Liang here gives all of our builders an extra build charge when we build them, which is absolutely fantastic. Okay, it's turn 48, ladies and gentlemen, and the barbarians are starting to become slightly a bit of a predicament. There's evidently a handful of barb camps down here somewhere, which is going to be slowing down our process, and also the fish clan has decided to spawn right here, potentially blocking off our entire access to this section of the
of the world. But hey, we've discovered France, and France is pretty much on par with us, except for some reason the French haven't built a military. Classic France. Nonetheless, I do believe we're going to be able to somehow make our way all the way over here and potentially aggressively forward settle them. So that's the plan. Also, we discovered tea, and well, as every British person knows, we need to have it. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's turn 64, and we almost have pottery, but most importantly, our scouts have been running around. We've discovered a few additional city-states, and we've also decided to purchase ourselves an Eagle Warrior, as I'm going to need to actually be able to punch through this barbarian clan eventually so that I can start settling cities over here. So that's our next goal. At the same time, we've improved all of our lovely furs, and we're just going to have this scout hopefully defend ourselves from the Stone Kite clan, which shouldn't be too difficult. And in nine turns time, we get foreign trade. Oh, wow, amazing. Oh, and also I've decided to name all of my cities after various wonders of the world. For example, the Bude Tunnel and the Binley Mega Chippy. Ladies and gentlemen, next turn on turn 68, not quite, of course, the religious turn of 69, but we're going to get ourselves our Pantheon. Yes, which means we can also make a religion. We could make a religion, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay, now in our Pantheon, we have a few interesting choices. We could get Monument of the Gods, which basically makes ancient and classical wonders slightly faster to build, but ultimately this isn't actually that useful for us because 15% is a single builder charge, so we wouldn't really be getting that much out of it. Several of these could be very useful, like say Divine Spark or something just as basic as the River Goddess, but I think we just have to go for what will boost our capital city the most, and that would be Goddess of the Hunt. Giving all of our lovely camps plus one food and plus one production, and seeing as we have several camps, that has absolutely yeeted some of these yields into the stratosphere, and we're now getting a new pop in just two turns. That is very nice indeed. Oh, and it looks like we found another sieve over here. Okay, right, well, we need to be careful with that. And it's Simon Bolivar. We found one of the best combat sieves in the game. Well, hopefully we can still sneak a few settlers out without them noticing. We are also now guaranteed into a golden era, which is glorious, and we can form our religion, which is, of course, what we will do. So let's find ourselves a religion. We will go for, of course, the turtle-looking one, and we shall form the religion of Teism, because that is the one unifying factor between us and China, a beloved worship of tea. And the only thing that really benefits us straight away would be Divine Inspiration, which will give us plus four faith from all world wonders we build. This will, of course, increase the yields of all of the world wonders, and as we're going to be building a bunch of them, it makes sense. And we're also generally likely to be spending faith in our next golden era, as in our next golden era, we're going to be able to buy settlers and workers using faith. So more faith is more good. And then we're also going to go for sacred places, because this is going to give us plus two science, culture, gold, and faith for each city following our religion that has a world wonder. As we're going to basically be building all of the world wonders in all of our various cities, it's a good thing to invest in, and also it's going to give us a nice bit of early science and culture. So Teism has now formed. But hey, we've managed to get ourselves a settler up and running, which is really, really good. We're going to need a good place to actually settle, and I was aiming for this river here with the elephants, but actually getting forces over there could be a challenge with how strong the AIs are. But hey, I can at least hopefully one hit a slinger with my eagle warrior and then I'm gonna go and murder this barb camp down there because I've simply had enough of it. Also let's build ourselves the great bath not because it's actually a useful wonder but just simply because I need to actually start pumping out as many wonders as possible. Oh my goodness they're just churning out so many units look at this there's like a warrior another warrior another warrior like please like can you just leave Binley Mega Chippy alone I know it's like a calling point for like lads everywhere but just please poor Binley Mega Chippy and yes our warrior over there that I had healing up has just been sniped out of thin air by some kind of barbarian. Oh dear, oh dear. Okay, maybe we aim to just settle this lake really close to Grand Columbia. It might upset them, but I need some kind of forward operating base before I might be able to deal with Barb Alley over there. So we're actually going to have Bude build our first proper district. It's going to build a campus. It's not going to be a very good campus, just plus two, but that doesn't really make a difference to me. I just need to get some kind of science production up and running. Oh my goodness, the AI is marching towards me with a slinger and a settler. Like, what are you doing, AI? <laughs> okay, because there's now a settler marching towards me. I can't actually really march my settler towards them, so I guess my new settler has to start heading up north to settle north of Ingarsagamu. Oh dear, oh dear. What a mess. All right, with one spare envoy, I'm able to actually gain suzerainty of Ingarsagamu, which is very nice indeed. This means we can now levy their military for 120 gold. We will get all of their military units for 90 turns. And in our case, that means we'd get one warrior for 120 gold for 90 turns. You know what? I actually think that's a good deal. So I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna take their warrior uh, because our local barb camp is just churning out endless quantities of warriors so I need some way to deal with it. Right, I'm gonna settle another city over here. It's got some decent yields. There's potentially a first to improve 
most importantly, there's areas for us to build wonders. Namely, these marsh and rainforest tiles will be really, really good indeed. So we'll get this city down and we'll immediately get it building another builder. Oh, we've discovered a new wonder as well, right next to, um, uh, Barbarian Builder. <laughs> Just... <laughs> So even the city states are just having everything stolen from them. Oh my goodness, this game is going to be so cursed. <laughs> this is just... Oh, and there's the Galapagos Islands. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, we've got a Morley here who can create random bonus luxuries, which is actually insane. But most importantly, having the Galapagos Islands here is kind of ridiculous because it means I can just buy, say, this tile here. And for 270 gold, we're going to be able to pick up a four science tile in just a few turns, which would be absolutely ridiculous. Right, now I've built myself my builder which means I'll be able to actually send that over to get working on the great bath at the same time the oracle wouldn't be a bad one to build but we're really just gonna need to actually build ourselves another builder endless builder building so hey now with our builder actually here we're able to reselect the great bath and the next turn our builder will be able to massively speed up the production of that actual wonder so what we do is we switch production over from builder to great bath select builder have it add production which will lower the time it takes us to build it from 50 turns to 40 Two. That's eight turns shaved off, but every time we use this ability, eight turns are going to be shaved off, meaning we do it seven times, and job done, the wonder's built without us actually having to build it. Oh, I've just discovered a new civilization over here. Okay, my scout was nearly murdered for it, but it's okay. We've discovered Canada. Lovely. Hi there, Canada. You've got a single slinger. My goodness, you're putting up a fight, and you even control a builder. That's impossible. How have you managed that? <laughs> no one can build a builder. Everyone knows that. Anyway, once again, switch production over to the great bath shave off another eight turns switch back to the builder that we're building and we're going to start researching state workforce which would allow us to build wonders ever so slightly cheaper and faster okay, and then we'll use this builder again to just eat off seven turns and yep as we now head into turn 100 things are going very well and oh all of these tiles just got some yields nice although we did lose one living person in bindley mega chippy which is a real shame the last thing we want to see is people dying in bindley mega chippy anyway this worker has now done his job all four of his builder charges have now been consumed we just need two more and then this lovely lovely monument will be perfect oh yes we've definitely found another spot for a city here we've got access to turtles pearls and tea and also actually hang on, we're gaining culture over here what over here is producing culture that i need to find out because potentially there's a world wonder that we could have and oh it's the giant's causeway okay okay all of this additional culture i just quite simply can't pass up in the early game so i'm going to actually have to settle right Right here even though it is a non-optimal spot as there is no fresh water all right it's turn 140 and yes we lost some units trying to fight off the barbarians but it's okay as i managed to capture a builder from the barbarians with two charges left on it so we'll be sending that over to the view tunnel maybe to do some basic improvements and just general jazzing up of the terrain meanwhile we can also build ourselves our first industry now this is something we managed to research by beelining currency and it's one of the lovely dlc things that is ever so slightly horrifically overpowered as we're going to get an industry on these lovely furs here which is going to make the production of civilian units 30% faster which is as you could imagine very very good indeed and we will also be finishing the temple of artemis uh, next turn which is very good indeed and after we have that i think we're probably going to try and get ourselves the pyramids but hey here's crater lake so that's fun and here we go come on yes temple of artemis lovely so with that bindley mega chippy is just going to be an incredibly happy place to be so we now have to wonder what we can build next in our camp capital city and we've got a few good options here the oracle is very very good indeed the hanging gardens could also be decent but most valuable of all the pyramids a free builder and plus one builder charges on all of our builders yes this just kind of has to happen and of course we're now going to start spamming out a few civilian units i think a trader is probably a good idea just to get our money up and running and in the next era we'll get the giant exodus of the evangelicals and use faith to churn out as many settlers as possible anyway right time to bash out these pyramids 31 turns i don't think so well, bam now 26 turns oh and there's just a barb camp here that's completely undefended well yep i will be stealing that bad boy provided they don't spawn in a unit and well they spawn in a unit but it's not going to be enough as i can disperse you and fantastic lovely stuff we do actually pick up sanguine pact as a potential secret society which would be fun as we'd get the vampire unit i think we're going to go for void singers as they're going to let us convert our faith generation into science and culture and we're going to be producing a decent amount of faith simply because we're going to have a whole bunch of wonders 
Vampyrs lying around. So we're Bam Pyramids now 22 turns away. And finally, we can pick up ourselves our first government. In our case, we're going to go for Autocracy for plus 10% production towards Wonders. And for actual bonuses here, we're going to go for the Core V system so that we can produce Wonders even faster still. And we're going to pick up plus 30% production on Builders. Absolutely fantastic. Lovely. Now, if we were to somehow build a Builder in Bindley Mega Chippy, it would only take seven turns, which is a very nice indeed. Seven turns for a five charge Builder is very nice. But after the Pyramids, it's going to be seven turns for a six charge Builder. And that's even better. Now, the main reason this strategy is so effective is because the AI simply can't keep up with us. We can build, say, the Hanging Gardens here, and for us and the AI, it would take us potentially 63 turns to build it. That is insane. However, instead of that, we can just build ourselves a builder for 25 turns here, or potentially in our capital, we could build a builder in just six turns, and that one builder has enough charges to complete the entire Hanging Gardens. This is why they're kind of just completely objectively better than everything. They are so powerful. Right, now we're going to get 150 Faith and lose one of Himiko's charges here in Nan Madol, which is good. That free Envoy will eventually allow us to seize the Suzerainty here. Right, and I'm going to do it again to get another 150. Oh, we also discovered Hero in the process. Nice. And with another of Himiko's charm, we will now seize Suzerainty of Nan Madol, making it ours. And, well, they have a lot of warriors we could try and steal. But, of course, we don't need to. We're just going to benefit from Himiko's charm here just to become Suzerain of as many places as possible. So, five more charges on Himiko here. I think what we're going to do is we're going to use up one of Himiko's charges to levy all of Nanbador's military, which is going to massively make us a big army. All of these warriors we now have for the next 90 turns. With them, we could actually probably take out Bogota. And actually, that might not be a terrible idea. I'm also going to pick up Ancestral Hall in our capital here. This is going to give us plus 50% production to settlers in our capital. But most importantly, new cities will get a free builder. And I will finally decide to actually connect with the Void Singers here. So we're bam, we We've picked up Melody. This changes our regular monuments into old god obelisks, which give us an additional bit of extra faith. Now, the only wonder in this game that hasn't been constructed by us is the Eta Monarchy, which was built by one of the AIs somewhere. I don't know which one, but at least one of them has some kind of vague gameplay sense. Anyway, I'll also disperse this barbarian outpost, start healing up some of these warriors, and then we will begin the invasion of Bogota very shortly. It's only got 13 defense, so as a city, it's very, very vulnerable indeed. Okay, now, of course, in this new era, Grand Colombia just got themselves their Commandante General, which is basically a great general with extra modifiers. In order to help me fight this war, I'm going to levy Granada here and use their one horseman to probably be able to just smash apart these cities. Oh, and of course, Grand Colombia's second city just revolted. Of course it did. Oh, that's hilarious. Oh, poor Grand Colombia. You are just not having a good day, my friend. Well, you know what? I don't think I need to do anything with this fight. I think Grand Colombia will lose their second city and I can capture their first one from them. Meanwhile, over here, we're going to want to start building the Great Library eventually. This would take us 150 turns to build, but instead, of course, if we can get a worker on top of it, it's just going to take seven. That's right, 150 turns worth of construction in seven. And this is why the AI is simply not going to be able to keep up with us when we're using this strategy. Oh, and we've just finished the Hanging Gardens. There we go. Smashed it out in hardly any time. And now the Butte Tunnel is home to the Hanging Gardens. So naturally, we're also going to make it the home to the Great Library, because why? Why not? We might as well. This is of course going to take quite a few builders charges because I don't want to spend the next 175 turns building it. Right, and with my one remaining builder charge here, I'm going to put one giant leap into the great library, reducing it from 172 turns to 140. That's 32 turns evaporated off of this wander here. Yep, that is the power of the builder. I mean, we could build a builder for 35 turns and we would build the great library faster. That is just how it works. It's insane. All right, anyway, I think enough time has passed that I can now declare a surprise war against Grand Colombia here. Uh, this isn't going to make them very happy, but it's fine. There's a few reasons we're doing this. Number one, I'm going to be able to take their worker from them, which is lovely. That's free charges on that bad boy. At the same time, uh, we're just going to march basically straight in. We're going to start beating up some of their archers here. We can send this cavalry straight over and it will actually get a major victory against the city. Why not? And in come the rest of the forces. Very good. Everything is going according to plan. Okay, we've actually met the Ottoman Empire. I have no idea where they are on this giant map. Okay, maybe they're up here somewhere. Okay, fine. They're over here, potentially, and that means we've still got all of this area that we can settle, and hopefully by murdering Bogota, we'll start the expansion process nice and early. Speaking of which, I think it's time for Bogota to fall to our lovely horsey boy, and this land is now ours. On to its second, even less defended city. And there we go. Fantastic. Simon Bolivar has now been defeated entirely. Grand Colombia 
did not survive and the city is ours. Do we want to keep it? Ah, we might as well. More cities is more good. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I've discovered that I'm an absolute smooth brain because I've forgotten how golden ages work now. Golden ages now require me to put policies into the slots of our government, which is why I haven't had the ability to buy civilian units with faith. I could have done this about 100 turns ago, and if I had, we'd have settled the entire map and we'd have infinite builders. But hey, there we go. I've now done it. We can now buy civilian units with faith. So that means we can go over here and buy a settler for just 1,200 faith. We can go over here and buy a settler for 1,200 faith. Okay, it is very expensive, but at the same time, it's also incredibly worth it. So we're going to buy one settler over here, and we'll buy another settler over here. Fantastic. And anyway, we're going to get another settler down, which is going to allow us to have a monopoly on tea, which is plus 15% science, if you can believe it. Very nice. Everyone knows drinking tea makes you smarter. What the heck just happened? We just got a victory. What? What? How? How do we win? <laughs> what? I'd like only a few turns have passed. Cultural victory? What? <laughs> How do we get a cultural victory? It's only turn 260. I'd like, come on. <laughs> Okay, like, I guess play culture, we were doing quite good. Like, how, what was our Taurus about? Oh, wait, there's, there's no graph for that. But Wanda's constructed. Here we go. This is the good graph. So, um, one AI managed to build one Wanda, and then we built, uh, I think, like, ten Wanda's there? Yep, something like that. Oh, my goodness. Um, well, apparently that was enough to win the game, uh, instantaneously on turn 261. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a cultural victory, um, right there. With just 50 tourism. That's, like, the lowest amount of tourism I've ever had for a cultural victory. But I guess just simply because the AI are getting massacred by the barbarians, they were never able to build any districts. Their production wasn't big enough to actually keep up with our insane tourism output, so we were able to just absolutely smash them. That is just absolutely insane. It's turn 262 out of 1,500. Now, 262 turns is just over half of a standard game length, the standard of 500 turns. And winning a standard game in just half the time is still quite decent, but winning a marathon game in just 262 turns. That is insane. We won the game in about 16% of its actual time. That's right, in just 16% of the game, by 890 BC, we have won a tourism victory, thanks to the sheer power of Binley Mega Chippy. Now, because we won in such a fast time, effectively, if we were to take that same length of time, and if we were to, say, put it into an online game, a game which only lasts 250 turns, then because we won in only just 16% of the game, that's effectively comparable to winning on turn 40 in an online game, which is absolutely ridiculous. Ah, this game is perfectly balanced with no exploits whatsoever. If we take a look at the tourism map out here, we can see that all of our lovely wonders in our capital city have just been churning out tourism at an insane degree. The Butte Tunnel as well did great. So Wrong over here was also doing fantastic. We have the highest science, the highest culture. We have the largest military. We, of course, have the most score. And if we really wanted to, we could secure ourselves a domination victory very easily as well. Ladies and gentlemen, we have absolutely absolutely massacred the AI here. So yes, whilst on normal game speeds or on fast or online game speeds, China is absolutely terrible because each worker charge might potentially at most shave one turn off of a wonder, at this game speed it is insane because each builder charge could potentially be shaving anywhere from 10 to 40 turns off of each wonder. And using just a single builder, bearing in mind all of our standard builders come now with seven charges preloaded, we can massively bash out wonders at a terrifying speed. Ladies and gentlemen, Gentlemen, this is a completely horrifically overpowered and glorious way of playing Sid Meier's Civilization 6. Burger me sideways with a tea bag. China, you're the goddamn strongest civ in the game at this speed. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, if you've enjoyed today's video, make sure to give it a like. Thank you to all of our lovely Patreons and channel members. And hey, if you're sat there wondering what to watch next, look no further than this video on screen now, hand chosen by myself to be perfect for you. Anyway, I'll see each and every one of you in the next one. Have a lovely, glorious day, and goodbye for now.